I'll fix that. My favorite part of the podcast. So, Fair Points Podcast, episode two. Uno, do it. Thank you, everyone that listened to the first one, first of all. We've got uh, probably about 30,000 downloads on podcasting and 10,000 easy views on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So I'm just looking to get for another beer. I can't even finish my Corona. We've got hey, I don't want to see another Corona after <laughs> last weekend. I ain't going to lie. When me and Ferris went to the shop mm. to get the booze for oh, your shit, birthday, yeah, yeah. obviously oh. Luke Betts, we couldn't even talk about this last time, but Ma. Luke Betts, um, James's manager, Chuck Fez. Yeah, he, he reached out to me. He sent me a nice uh, message on Instagram just saying, how's Ramadan going? He was like, oh, have you got PayPal or can I transfer you some money for to get some like Smith for a, a few cases of champagne? Now, bearing in mind I'm I'm the the most limited representative of the group, I've got no experience of alcohol. This is what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't have minded, but they gave the guy who doesn't know a Corona from a Heineken. But no. Yeah, I, I guess my view is obviously he knew I was a responsible one of the group. <laughs> um, but mate, yeah, I didn't fair. know how much it would cost, so I was like, initially I was going to respond to him, going, "Oh, mate, don't worry, mate, I'll, I'll, I'll get it, and you just, I'll just sort me out later." <laughs> and then when he transferred me the money, I went into my account. I obviously won't say how much. It obviously, obviously wasn't loads, but I was like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> come on." <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I reached out to you, didn't I? I was like, "I'm, I'm going to need some help here." Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm used to like obviously I buy, dri- I like buy rounds on a night out, but. I don't really know what to get, the so I kind of reached out to you, didn't I? And then you, you said to me, because it was my 31st birthday uh, last weekend, you were like, oh, don't worry about booze. <laughs> and I was like, what does this mean? And then you'd been a bit quiet on that mm. front. But then when you turned up in your car, I was like, someone called 91, holy shit. That's a, <laughs> lot. That's a lot of booze. And then with all the excitement, mm. that big Magnum Rose sliding out the back of the boot and it didn't smash. That was a, that was a sign that we all were right. in. We got, uh, so I decided, we, you know, we were adhering to social distancing and uh, I, I rented an Airbnb for the weekend, which was actually really nice to have like a bit of a staycation for it. Mm. Um, and yeah, things got pretty loose. Uh, we vowed, I definitely vowed that I was going to be off the booze for some time. It's taken, I had a beer last night, so it was six days. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was very good. It was, uh, it was very good. Um, for me, do you know what? It was a prime example of... Like a like what a great night out is, and I think sometimes lads we get really fixated on like when we go out. It's we we'll, gotta sort them nostrils out again. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> rhino. <laughs> Sorry. the rhino, Sorry. the rhino, the <laughs> rhino. But I think it's an important point, right? I think let's be honest, right? With lads, and we touched on the pos last on our last podcast, right? but yeah, but the majority of lads, it's all about right. Where are we going out tonight? Where, where's the girls gonna be? But last weekend, right? Who was there? It was all your all close the, people. All the people you want there, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there wasn't any pos, you know, um, initially. Um, but the the main focus was our friendship group. And we had the probably one of the best nights. And yeah. for, for me as well, like when I think about my best nights out in Sydney, it's when it's just us and it's the band. So the most important thing is having a laugh on a night out. Like I don't really care about anything. That All that other stuff is a bonus. Yeah. And when you actually, when you've got all the people that matter to you there, that's the best night. Like I've, I've had a, one of the funniest nights out with Charlie, Smith's housemate. Me and him have just gone to Ravisi's. There's absolutely no pos there, but we're having <laughs> bands. We're, we're, sh- we're, we're shooting from the hip on the D floor. Um, but it's just, yeah, again, it goes to show that, you know, when you're focusing on what's important, you have a great time. Yeah. Have you? N- oh, go on. It's a, no, it's a, it's a fair point. It's a fair <laughs> point. You made there when, mm. you know, nine times out of ten, when you go out, you can sometimes get into that mindset where you're chasing the night. Is there a better bar to go to than the one we're at? Oh, it's getting late. Are we going to get into that next one? Rather than just enjoying where you're at, the atmosphere that you're in, because you can be in the shittiest bars mm. and have some of the best nights you've ever had with yeah. your mates. You know, pre-drinking, sometimes you have the best time pre-drinking for a night out. And this is the comparison. You know, some girls, I reckon they like foreplay more than sex. <laughs> and 100%. There's, there's mate, with foreplay, you. is it? <laughs> it lasts for, longer. I, for me, I rate it high, mm, not higher, but it's so underrated. Like foreplay, I, I'll settle for foreplay over, oh, that's controversial. <laughs> but it's, mm, yeah. But you know, 100%. so like so like a lot of girls, I rate them, slow down, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Speed up, babe, come on. Who <laughs> <Linda come>. says <laughs> that to me when I'm unpacking the fucking dishwasher? <laughs> <laughs> and like, and you're in this position where you know sometimes uh, the foreplay can be 
the best part and yeah. I agree with that and that's sometimes the same as a night out when you go on a night out you, you get to the end of it and although you've had a good time you mm. go pre-drinks was the best Yeah, getting absolutely leathered before you went out like going out was good it was the icing on the cake but the cake was actually the pre-drinking with the boys you're in mm. a well lit room you can see each other the strobes aren't pinging your eyes off yeah it, it was it was a good dynamic um, like I said everyone was there do you know what for me is interesting is obviously because I don't drink like the dynamic being in a house um, to being out on a, on a night out like obviously I think when because everyone asked me oh, how, how did you get on not drinking on a night out but that example I turn into like more of like a security guard supervising making sure you're not too pissed how many drinks have you had people chew your ear off I was having so many conversations I was like I can't remember what her name was but she was chatting to me for ages about her ex-boyfriend and I was like oh my god <laughs> but when someone's pissed they can't gauge how uninterested you are and like because I'm there I'm obviously I'm quite polite and I'm like fucking when's this conversation gonna end <laughs> but it was nice I think um Obviously, we got the we got the cookie as well. For, that was for Smith. That was that was really nice, wasn't it? The, the cookie point was was funny because you've wrote one one and a half books. You have speak in front of hundreds of people, and then we stuck him on the spot mm. at his uh, at his birthday, and we were like speech, speech. <coughs> and to be fair, it was a couple of bottles of champagne deep. But mm. for most people, that boosts confidence. Yeah. But you, it's like I think I know he, he was about to do the loose. <laughs> 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 you wanted to say something it was like I don't know it was yeah. I was like, I just, I was like oh, God, do you know what I'm throwing it out there I fucking hate birthdays <laughs> <laughs> really I fucking hate birthdays go on why the shit what's the point nah mate yeah, I'm the opposite and, nah same with Christmas like when you're a kid yeah fair enough but it's only because of the belief like you know <clears throat> if I want anything I'll get it if I can't afford it I'll work harder like to, to just be given something because you were born because you fell out of a vagina on that day let's give you something it's pathetic nah. and it's just a good excuse to have a party. If someone was to say you're not allowed to have parties on your birthday, they'd be shit. But then on the other hand of that, if you didn't have birthday parties, I think there's certain people and I mean, you could argue that, well, then maybe they're not that true of friends, but there's definitely certain people that turn up to like, I used to have a real close friendship group um, back in the UK, but we all lived all over the state. But when we, whenever it was New Year's Eve, we would make an extended effort for that one night of the year, everyone would be together. It doesn't matter what our other commitments were, where we are in our lives, but for that one day of the year, we'd get together. And for the sake of New Year's Eve, it kept our friendship group as strong as it was. And I think birthdays have that similar effect because, you know, it does bring people together. And okay, I, I agree, you don't need it for the the gifts and the woo-ha cake. It, it does bring people together. Yeah. It just gives me a bit of anxiety. I'm like, oh Does God, it? like, you know, like coming up to it, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this in my house. We've just had fucking quarantine. Everyone's like, I'm somebody at the house party. I'm like, I work there, I shit there, I wank there, I shower there. Like I do everything there. My life is in that house. The last thing I want to do is let's live a normal day and repeat, but with more people. Mm -hmm. Idea of hell. Then renting an Airbnb, I was like, oh, fucking hell. Like, you know, Definitely rule number one, back. no parties. <laughs> Yeah. Rule number two, no gatherings. It was next to a retirement home as well. Yes, yeah. let's just mention. <laughs> and, and the next morning, us, me and Ferris there cleaning up cigarette butts. Man, I, could I woke up and I could hear someone tinging about. And I was like, who the fuck is tinging at like seven, seven in the morning? There's Smith's mate clean. I never thought I'd see the sight. Mate, the anxiety went straight through him. Yeah. Mate, I, can't, I can't relax until um, everything's like I cleaned could, up. I could sense the, that you were a bit uh, The state uneasy. of that room was like a bomb site but mm. what was scary is the fact that me and cam had easily put in a 30 40 minute shift of collecting <laughs> beers before we went down to bed <laughs> you know like how we scrubbed yeah. that room up resembles how some people scrub up night out just Aww. takes two hours suddenly a bombshell into a brilliant room worldy that yeah, yeah that's a tough one isn't it with what? uh <laughs> Of the pos and, and, <laughs> and scrubbing up well. Like, what's your preference? I like a, I like a basic. So like, I was <laughs> fucking <laughs> <You're> the rhino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. Um, yeah, I like a, I like a. But the thing is, so imagine this, right? I always used to say I like a plain Jane, mm. and then people are like, oh, "That's derogative." No, no, yeah. it's not. No, it's not. I just, you know, leggings, no makeup. You come out of the sea. I'm like, whoa. Lululemon yeah, yeah, leggings. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm doing the luge over a pair of I'm Lululemon leggings. I'm doing the luge. But yeah, I, I get where you're coming from it, from that point. But like this, you know, you can, you've got to appreciate a girl at worst, like at best. And like for me, if you like a girl, you like them when they're no makeup looking a four or loads of makeup looking like a seven. You know what I mean? It's that, 
if you have a connection with someone, you kind of like. When I was younger, I would definitely have been like, they have to be the tarted. absolute king chopper. Just <laughs> well, they have to be have to be tied up to the irons all the yeah, time. Really? Whereas now, like you know, yeah. I don't let have less attraction for Lyndall when she's not wearing makeup. That's a good. You thing. probably like her more. Like well, it, it I, it's not something that I will assess. Like, oh, I think it's just a shift because you could probably do all right because you just iron that shirt before <laughs> doing this. Right, this guy ironed his gi today before doing jujitsu. Now so, I take pride in my. Pe- oh, that's just me, mate. But like, so I'm yeah, saying, if, so if you that. if you were dating someone and she was like, "I need 45 minutes to get ready," you're like, "Excellent, let's start mm. now." Nah, nah, but I I, I find that and like. And that just fits your own time scales. Like for so me, you find it annoying. You're about to say, so like me today when I'm like Ferris, can we go? And you're like, I'm doing my hair. Y- y- no, but you <laughs> didn't give me any real time frames. But I always fit in. Like I've always make sure that I'm preparing before. But for for me, it's that the co- it's quite hard, I think. But for me, I just you don't need to. You appreciate someone like you said when they don't have that makeup. And I feel sometimes people make that extra effort to to go way far beyond. Whereas actually, and I think it's one of the problems with online dating i think because what you know asking someone what they find attractive it's it's not i mean makeup or no makeup is a really low question you know because we don't really yeah, think about that you know it's shallow yeah but for me it's but w- especially online dating you're completely judging someone on what they look like but i found so many girls attractive on night out like for me humor being able to be take aggressive bands like i l- sometimes Funny. come across as arrogant online because i'm super like just Blase with my yeah yeah, with my bants, but being able to kind of get that back for me, I would find someone who online, if I'm being completely honest, I'd probably just go nah nah. But having that connection is and it's so hard to find. I think we should delve into that. Number one, yeah, sarcasm and bants, Mm -hmm. amazing as far as attractive, and that's why I hate when people go tits or ass, (laughs) and you're like (laughs) ass. You're like you're like oh thanks for giving me two different parts of the body. It's a lot more complex than that. But let's why don't we delve into the thing is we haven't actually looked at any notes or anything. But let's delve into online dating life at the moment. So like so like (laughs) we we did a video on YouTube before on the same channel where um, we spoke about dating. We spoke about Hinge. We compared profiles, etc. But the other day. Ferris was like, there's, there's no poos. On there's no p- so I took a two-month sabbatical um, prior to Ramadan. I just deleted the apps. Just kind of, mm. you know, sometimes you've got to dip in and out. Oi, oi. Uh, Ramadan came along, obviously, Pardon focusing on, on the spiritual month. And I came out. And then I re-downloaded the apps just to kind of, you know, just to put myself out there and uh, see what's up. And fuck you now. I mean... Your I, app I, is broken. I sent... No, I, so I, I, I thought at first, I was like... He's mate. always on my case. He's going, Fez, just put yourself out there. Line up two or three dates a week. And I'm like, <laughs> Smith, mate. I was like, hang on. I'm just going to show you what's out of the end. Mate, I, I, I DM'd Hinge on Instagram the other day. I was like, hi, can you put me through to someone in your IT department? Because yeah, I don't did. know. I don't know how you... I don't know who's in charge of your algorithms. But, mate, it's... You explain it because so, I don't want to say so anything bad. I remember when I first used Hinge, I was like... <laughs> Yeah. I was like, I was like, do you know what? I like this multi-dynamic. You know, yeah. there's if you use Tinder, Tinder swipe in, uh, Bumble. Um, <laughs> you know, I would say Bumble higher caliber, less yeah. stable. Who you're gonna match with? Um, after completing both of those, I went on Hinge, mm. and Hinge. I was like, I like this dynamism where you can open a conversation with banter. Where sorry, just quick note: his caliber on Hinge prior to recent I remember Phnom Penh Phnom Penh yeah it was absolute Phnom Penh I was fuming I'm like what the fuck is this like carry on like so all of here is a Ho Chi Minh in (laughs) (laughs) you guys have been making up some slang mate he's he's the the best at it mate when 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 they when they close down the beach right the police were going up and down he's like look at the feds mate handing out single fins (laughs) and mate oh I just yeah I crease at puns mate so we're just making up that random words on the story so I was like I was I remember being on a hinge I was like wow 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 Wow, wow all of this and um doesn't mean you match with them but they, they were coming up so i mm. said to ferris i was like look you, you're gonna have to drop these standards a bit <laughs> and i was bantering him i was like look instead of being the fucking reacher why not you be the settler for a, a change mm. i looked on his phone i literally <laughs> just, thought just, there just was think, a, just, just be careful what yeah you yeah, yeah of course of course of course but there was like a glitch in the matrix and all i can say is the people that come up on his hinge I've never seen these people in Bondi. <laughs> so I got him to lower his, his radius to like, to like two kilometers. And I'm not saying, oh, I was rating birds out of 10. I'm just saying there was no one of even an inkling of compatibility. What's happened here? Cool. Okay, no is problem. it still recording? Yeah, it's still recording. Oh, thank God for that. No problem. Uh, Continue. So yeah, like... <laughs> back in the room. And you're back in the room. So it's right, I'll edit that out. <laughs> um, 
and yeah i was like this this is as far as compatibility there there's nothing and i mean nothing close and i mean there uh, wasn't a single two i don't think on there for me i remember i used to be like all right because you know i was a single guy looking for love mm. and um fucking hell past tense uh and <laughs> found it <laughs> when i was on it i would limit myself to like 20 swipes every mm. time i go on mm. you get a couple of yes couple of no whatever with Ferris, we must have gone through a hundred swipes. Yeah. And even me, the man, the friend in his ear, the guy saying, Fez, there was zero matches <laughs> in 100 swipes. When he messaged Hinge, I was like, yes, you need <laughs> to do this. Because someone somewhere <clears throat> behind the algorithms is sat there going, let's play with someone. Let's, let's fucking, fucking ruin him even further, mate. <laughs> yeah, I just don't understand it, really. I, I think okay. for... For me, not sitting here from my moral high ground, got girlfriend. Yeah, go but on. For I, I did Tinder, and yeah, Completely you know, it was Completely it was what it was. But it became a point for me where I was got to the point where I was happy enough to hear the word no, and for someone to tell me no, that I could go out confidently on a night out into a <laughs> bar, not even in an alcoholic situation. And if I saw someone that I thought was attractive, got into a conversation with, Post. was prepared <laughs> yeah, was prepared to go, hey, look, do you know what? Do you want to go on a date or do you want to have dinner or whatever it is? And if they say, look, no, sorry, I appreciate that. It, but if it wasn't such a stumbling block for guys to get in pied or for girls to get pied if you could politely say you know what I really appreciate your offer but I've got a boyfriend and it be genuine or you know what I'm just haven't really found the same connection as you have from this COVID conversation COVID definitely has impacted you know? this as well so you, you think you've got COVID so you haven't even got these opportunities to be chivalrous but like legitimate I think there's an algorithm that plays behind the scenes where there'll be a swipe right ratio so I reckon that, you know, Tinder did the best picture where Tinder said, actually, we've put all of your photos in front of people. This is the one that does the best. And I thought that hugging a koala was going to get me laid. Mm. But it turned out <laughs> that doing a handstand on Cape Tribulation was the one that really... Shirt mm, off or... Shirt off, yeah. yeah and I was quite lean at the time. Do you know pick. all uh, koalas have got chlamydia? Do you know that? I do, indeed. Yeah. Is that true? It is. Mm. And if they don't, they do now. I need, I need to, <laughs> I need do to we see need the evidence. To, do we need to talk about the space thing? Like, yeah, but you can you can touch on that in a bit, I think. But before we get into that, and I think this is a good reel off from the birthday weekend. I'm just gonna put it out there, DMT. What's been your experiences? Yeah, talk to us. So uh, I'm not going to incriminate anyone or use <laughs> any names uh, because DMT is an illegal substance, and I am not promoting drug use with anyone, recreational mm. or not. But. When I say recently, this could have been my birthday weekend. This could have been last night or this could have been a year no. ago <laughs> in somewhere. This could have been a year ago where it was with someone, you know, in a legal state in America, let's mm. say. And so where do I begin? First time I took GMT, I was a bit drunk, didn't really remember much. How do you take it? Oh, you smoke it. But, but, but when someone says smoke, I, I imagine you with a crack spoon. like. No, no, no. So you, you sprinkle it into like a cigarette. Okay. And then you smoke it. Then the second... It smells fucking It smells ring, it? minging. Yeah. Second time I smoked it, I thought everyone was made out of plastic. Third what? time... Um, <laughs> this, these are week on week. Def <laughs> definitely a lot recently. Uh, third time uh, was actually at my birthday party. And I thought I saw it while I was looking at the Northern Lights. So I was on the balcony watching the Northern Lights over fucking Sydney. And um, so maybe last night or maybe another time <laughs> ago, uh, I sat down with two friends that can't be named. And I was like, let's do it again. Bloody so, hell. Yeah. So <laughs> last night, too, guys. imagine this, right? First time. Uh, we, we tried making like a joint mm -hmm. just tobacco and a bit of DMT and we smoked it and I remember like colours running into each other it was a bit like LSD um, it was very much a psychedelic experience and then I, very uniquely I was sat there and the whole room seemed like I was looking at it through a fisheye lens and nothing existed outside of me and my two mates enjoying this moment together so we're enjoying this moment together we got music on the TV and nothing else exists and one of my friends goes wow just doing this on a friday and the word friday hit me and i was like oh that's a word that is constructed to divide time and it's like friday to me felt like it was a real harsh cut in the fabric that was just me and my friends in the moment 
and I felt it was so intrusive and I felt how dare you bring that word Friday into this I was like instead of thinking as time as minutes days hours I was literally just with my friends and we were enjoying it we were looking at colors we were having giggles whatever it was I was like I really disagree with your humanized way of dicing time into finite periods which is a bit mad so I sit forward and I look at one of my friends and I was like we need to go further. We were too caught up with trying to smoke a joint whilst this was all going on that you can't really do both together. So we rolled a Duke Nukem. Uh, instead of rolling a joint, we rolled it in a cigarette. And I haven't told Sonny this. I've told Paris this. So when I was doing it, I was like, right, I'm I'm going for it now. <laughs> and uh, I had to teach one of my friends how to smoke. And like, I used to smoke weed when I was younger. I don't do it anymore. It was like two years of my life, I don't remember. And I was like, I was like, 10% drag, 90% dilution. I was like, vodka from the drawer, mixer from the air. And like, I was having to teach one of my friends to do it because he was pranging me out while I was having a good time because he was like, Phew. and then he was like, I would struggle to get it down. I was like, yeah, because you're inhaling fucking half a joint, mate. So um, first time I smoked it, did two, three tokes, massive breath, breathed out, watched it go around. And then as I took it again, I took this big toke, took this big inhale. And I knew at that point that I probably wasn't going to see that joint again. So I held it in there for like 30 seconds. And between joint one and joint two, we took loads of paintings from around the house and brought them into the front room. (laughs) And I'm sat opposite a cartoon of a woman saying shush like this. So as I'm holding this breath, I look and then I start to see her hair move. And I was like, mate, fuck that. I I saw that. But this, this was the DMT. So then I started exhaling really slowly. I went, and as I was Don't exhaling, tell me you blew her hair. no, the hair was moving, but the the black paint in between her hair was the darkest color I've ever seen. It was like it w- it wasn't just black; it was darker than black. So I carry on breathing out, and as I carry on breathing out, I start get drawing into this whole experience a bit more, a bit more. And we had um, London Grammar on, right? We put on London Grammar strong, and everything started to become very hallucinogenic. So I covered my eyes. And right when I covered my eyes, I actually put the back of my hands onto my eyes like this. And a kaleidoscope doesn't do it justice. And it's the closest I've ever felt connected to the universe in my life. I cannot explain to you the shapes, the colors, the vividness, how fast you're moving through it. It's as if. What, you, are, your, what are your visuals look like? My eyes are closed, so it's pitch black, closed. but it's what you see in the pitch black. And it felt like you're traveling through a universe. And suddenly the concept of there being multiple dimensions of universe is like, like in a particle, we don't know what is smaller than a particle. Sometimes people can hypothesize universes exist within the tiniest amount of fucking particle and that, you know, we are just a part of something much bigger. And they call it the spirit molecule. And I was so fucking connected to it like that. Then I open my eyes, I look at the painting and then I close them again, right? And this is what I said to uh, Dira and I told him about afterwards. So imagine you hear music on a speaker. That's a one out of 10. Then you get the new Bose noise cancelling headphones, you put them on. That represents a five out of 10. The way I was listening to London Grammar was either a 10 or a 15 out of 10. It was as if I was an MP3 player and that song was uploaded into my soul and I wasn't sure if I was listening to it or if that song existed inside me. I can kind of relate a little bit to the time that I tried when I tried mushrooms. Mm. And um, when I tried tried the mushrooms, my friend was, I won't name him, a little bit like <laughs> hippie. And, you know, he was like, yeah, just come and come and try this. You know, we'll do it in like a safe scenario. Mm. We'll set you up in the <coughs> lounge and, you know, make sure you do this beforehand. He said, I'll be in the other room and just um, I'll sit and make sure you're okay. So I sat there and he gave me like these binaural beats to listen to and I'm sitting there and then he comes in with a notepad and he goes, just in case you feel compelled to write. I was like, mate, I haven't picked up a pen since school. <laughs> Can't even fucking <laughs> sign my autograph. <laughs> or whatever. So I lay down there. And then like about 20 minutes past, I'm like, what am I meant to be feeling? And then like, I was like, ah. <laughs> the lights started to glow and, you know, I started to like feel a bit warm and fuzzy and your brain just sort of like opened up and I I just started thinking and it felt as though I could answer any one of the questions that I possibly had in my life at that moment and I'm talking about things like this was before I came to Australia it was like is the right thing to go to Australia right now 
and I could look and ask myself that question and the light would bright shine brighter in the room if it was a yes and then the, <laughs> the scenario would kind of get dark if it was a no and it was really weird and I was kind of like starting to map things out and all of a sudden I picked up this pen and I was doing like spider charts and like going like, okay, Australia. And then it was like, I'm going to meet a girl on a beach. Poss, drawing out on the roadmap for <laughs> the Poss. Dick. No, it was like, I was going to meet a girl. And like, it was weird how many of these things actually come to fruition later mm. down when I reflect back on it. But the, the noise, when I came out of it and I was kind of like, this was really weird. It was one of those experiences that I probably would never do again, but I'm glad that I've done it. Mm. Um, I came out of it and my mate had some food for me ready because I hadn't eaten for ages. And I remember my fork was here and I'm trying to get it in my carrot on the plate, but it was so long, my fork. And I was like, I'm still tripping, aren't I? And he was like, yes. <laughs> and it felt like that whole period of time was like an hour, but it was five minutes. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to walk home. And I started walking home um, and it was exactly how you just described that. I could hear people's conversation in cars and I could hear a busker playing and it was like the clearest like HD it's like sound HD that beyond. I'd ever heard. And I remember like after I'd heard that, I was still like kind of vibing off this mm. and I put my headphones in and I just walked for about 40 minutes just listening to music because it was just the clearest sound that I'd ever heard. And like I said, it was that was probably as close as I could get to have what you're describing but yeah crazy experience do you know what, on, oh, that's it. i've always been interested i've never really had the urge to do any like coke or ket or anything like that but with like mushrooms and dmt i've always been intrigued i don't think i'd ever do them but i've always been intrigued like when we won't mention when people did it but i remember they came up to me and they were like fez we know you don't do drugs, we know you don't drink, but that was fucking insane. You need to do it. Like people who would ne like would never encourage me to do anything were coming up to me and going, Fez, you need to try it. And I was, mate, I was obviously like fresh off, uh, I won't say fresh off Ramadan, but I was trying to keep, <laughs> keep that kind of gives it away, but I was trying to keep myself together. Do you know what I mean? I've had the most spiritual month, mate. Happy Eid. Here's a bit of DMT. No, fucking, the devil's out. Fucking, the devil's been locked up for an entire month and now he's fucking trying to have be yeah. I think that would yeah. I think with with drugs there's like a line in everyone's probably mm. got like a line in terms of like you know you'd go to alcohol yeah. or you go to alcohol and cigarettes or you go to <laughs> yeah or you go to, to heroin yeah. everyone's got a sort of well you got some have you <laughs> it's, it's, everyone's yeah. got a level in which they would deem okay and I've definitely in, in the in the past been offered drugs and I'm like you know what no that's not for me mm. and like I know other people that have done them and do them and it's fine, but it's just for me, it's like, no, that's not yeah, 100%. what I'd want to do. It's all about the I... payoff as well, especially for my instance. It's like, I I have no issues. You can do whatever you want. For me, I always look at things as, what's the payoff afterwards? Like, like, for, like the way I see booze and stuff. Depends and on money you sell. Yeah. yeah Economies of scale. Exactly. Mates rates. And often or not, for me, it's not really worth it because the low afterwards and i think I, i'm a person who i'm very aware of myself and things that make me feel good things that don't um and some people can deal with certain things and i, I probably i know that if i kind of divert a bit then my probably my mental health takes a dip my spiritual like a, a typical day for me like some people can make a bad it's not a bad decision some people make a decision and like can go out get on the sesh pick themselves up I can name loads of people who do that, and then they roll. Whereas if I was to do that, I'd be done. wallowing on the depths of hell, you know? But, like, certain days for me, like today, for example, getting up. I know I don't do this all the time, but getting up for sunrise, yeah. just me and Smith doing a bit of shopping, have a bit of, like, those are the things that feed me. And I, I'm probably someone who can't handle the complete reverse, yeah. you know, like... You're you're good at like you're like a rhino. Do you know what I mean you'll go out, you'll I send it completely, then loads, you'll be doing yeah. the live. Whereas like me, if I mate, if I go out and I just drink red, well, I've got a hang like I'm hung over because I'm just so sleep deprived. But I think it's 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 exactly that. Everyone knows what works for them and what doesn't. And I think the older you get, you know what does and doesn't work for you. It's mm. like when I was 21 and my or no, I was even older than that, 22 or 23, and my friend sent me to Amsterdam. They were like, try weed. It's your birthday. Mm. And I was like, well, fuck it. It's my birthday, whatever. I'll maybe try it. Um, and 
I remember trying it and I was like, you know what? That isn't for me. I it got just... I got a spike last night. So I was made a cookie milkshake. <laughs> and I wonder in my first didn't have any. And I drank it. <laughs> they have bitters. I was like, nah, nah, nah. Mate, so imagine this, right? So I had this cookie milkshake. It was delicious. And then 20 minutes later, I turned to Ferris. I go, I'm fucking stoned. <laughs> And, like, <laughs> and I was like, I was. C- so, g- can you describe the setting where we? <laughs> <laughs> so like, so imagine this, right? I've just had the DMT experience of my life, right? And I remember watching the Mike Tyson video where Mike Tyson explains DMT, and he's like, like he he explains how it's changed his life, right? And I'm I was there, and I was like, right, I've tripped balls before, I've done acid, I've done most things. Sorry, I've never mom and tried dad. any of that. So. Oh don't mind next year uh, and um and yeah so i've done all this stuff i was like and then i smoked dmt the first joint i was like it's like a weed mixed with lsd and a bit of mushrooms i was like but this isn't a spiritual drug i was like yeah these fucking hippies are just there like oh, it's spiritual have some mushroom tea second duke nukem roly i turned to one of the boys that i live with <laughs> and i looked at him and i said I get it. And he goes, mate, I get it. I never understood what people had spoken about before until last night, until that second joint. And when we finished, we were completely content with it. And you were normal as well. When I saw yeah. you, like there was no, mate. that's one thing I noticed about uh, post DMT was that I couldn't, even when people were describing it to me face to face, there was absolutely no fine. Like I've seen people who are on MD mate and they're fucking grabbing onto the walls <laughs> and like, I don't want to meet your mum. I want to meet me friends. I'm like, fuck it. There was a guy in the burger shop today doing like, was off his choppers at like 11 o'clock. Mate, to but this is two minutes and it's gone. Mm. And I, I had a, a call with my editor for my second book. Uh, at HarperCollins congrats if I put that bit Cheers. in <laughs> yeah and I, and I said to her I was like uh, I was like Lydia sorry I'm sorry I'm late I've just been smoking DMT she was like you say that to her yeah yeah like transparency I was like look like I've just been smoking DMT and she was like what's that and I was like oh you know dimethyl I was like Joe Rogan goes on about it um, and you know what's funny I think in the next 10, 15, 20 years we're going to start to see these things used as psychotherapy LSD uh, MDMA in some respects and this isn't from an anecdotal standpoint. If you type in LSD PubMed into Google, you find the literature, literature, <laughs> literature on actual studies of this being used to improve people's quality of mental health. And I think we're going to laugh soon when we look back and see about it being illegal. And LSD, right, there was a lot of scare tactics through the 70s and 80s where people were like, oh, people have died taking it. They jumped out of windows. The one person who... Uh, jumped out the window it was suicide it was seven months after she took lsd and she was on suicide watch for the majority of that time but they were like no she took lsd and that's why she killed herself Mm. there's actually uh, as far as i'm aware not been any if many related deaths to the types of acid or mushrooms yet you know and then even if people do conjure up some alcohol alcohol, cigarettes drink driving fuck how many national sports stars a-list celebrities have been caught drink driving, which is one mm. of the most dangerous things that you only do to yourself, but to other people. We saw the YouTuber die in the car crash in LA not too long Fucking ago. Fucking hell, yeah. Pa- Paul Walker. Like, all these people, like, no one's no one's bringing the two together. Like, but when it when we talk to, like, uh, you know, drugs the of the hallucinogenic standpoint, they're, they're deemed bad. And I'm not saying it's that they're good. It's a taboo subject, isn't it? It is now. But, like, we go to Denver in America. We can do mushrooms. It's legal do DMT and it's legal as far as I'm aware and the touching on the mushrooms thing and I actually had this in the notes for today and I'm not telling people to do it because I have a feeling there are some people everyone from a genetic standpoint their mental health some people are predisposed to depression putting it out there they are some people aren't if that person who is predisposed to depression wants to try something to see if it gives them a different perspective and standpoint in his mental health why should they not allow it it gave me a completely different outlook because I would have never tried anything like that because i don't like i think probably similar to you wouldn't like the thought of not being in control and yeah. it wasn't until like i said i tried that and i, I like i said i didn't ru- want to rush to try it again and probably never will do it again but i can understand now why people would do it and i do think for for a lot of sense it made me feel at ease with a lot of my emotions and things that I had running through my head at the moment that I wasn't really able to process and it enabled me to process it in a non-emotional way in a very like 
I guess, you know, easy way to be able to comprehend my thoughts. And yeah, it was, it was an experience that, you know, I wouldn't negatively say to people not to do should the right situation in the right setting arise in a controlled environment with someone that, you know... People are going to do what they want to do. And again, Mm. with cocaine, and I think that cocaine is going to become legalized in the next 10 years. I think? I think we're going to look back and we're going to laugh. If you legalize it or you don't, and you keep it legal, people are going to do it. People of the personality trait that are control freaks and love to drink are going to take cocaine to straighten themselves out. There's nothing you can do to stop them. For the last 20, 30 years people have been smuggling cocaine inside their digestive tract to get it to people in Miami, LA, New York that want it. And we seem to think that it's the bottom feeders that use it. It's not, it's doctors, it's lawyers, it's insurance brokers, it's very wealthy people. Everyone, mate. Everyone, right? So the demand's there. Your choice isn't a battle on drugs, it's a battle on whether you tax it or not. And if you do tax it, there are going to be some overdoses, there are going to be some deaths. But ultimately... In a few years' time, they're going to have to concede five billion pounds the London cocaine industry is worth. Two and a half billion of that could go to the tax man should it be taxed. But it's who moves first on this. And you go to Amsterdam. I remember going into a club in Amsterdam and the guy being like, have you got any pills on you? Plus GST. And I looked at him and I was like, he's like, show me. And he was like, you're not in trouble. So I got my hand out and he was like, okay. He was like, be careful with that one. And you go. Fucking hell. And they've got a policy in Amsterdam where you can't take more than five pills. Five pills into a club. What do you think of Amsterdam, by the way? I Seedy wouldn't, place. I wouldn't rush back there. No. Um, I think it's a place that you you go to from England because it's close and to to try weed. And, you know, I've heard it's a lovely place and there's a lot of culture I've heard there. about brothels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but did you, did you go to the red light? There's district? a lot of, like, scenic parts of Amsterdam which mm. are beautiful to go and see <laughs> the, scenic. the red light scenic yeah. the red light scenic <laughs> mate on that note though but, they're but for non pen but oh. you get clouded by the seediness of Amsterdam when you go yeah. there and I know people that are from Amsterdam are like this is actually a lovely place yeah but it is known for its seediness it, pl- it plays on it just plays on your like fucking like, natural yeah. instincts it's like it's like strip clubs mate I hate, I hate strip clubs. Well, this is what I want to debate. What's your view? I hate them. <laughs> if, if I'm going to have a bird, give me a boner and not sleep with me, I don't want to have to pay for it. Mate, but, ev- but everyone, right? Every guy that goes into a strip club, right? Especially when you go on stag dues, the whole group is like, oh, right, we're going to go to the strip club, uh, but I'm not going to get a dance. Not gonna. This, is, this is how guys work, mate. It's, the way it's wired is fucking, it's built to draw you in. So you go in there going, nah, nah, I'm not going to get a dance, not going to get a dance. Then they come out and then they're looking fit, and then you're like, nah, 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 still not going to get a dance. And then they, one of them starts making eye contact with you, and you're like, She on. likes me. Yeah, you, mate, you turn around, and you're like, hang on, she fucking fancies me. And then she starts doing you, you, and you're like, nah, 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 nah. And you're like, and you go, how much? And she's like, oh, 120 euros. And you're like, what's that in pounds? <laughs> and then you're like, fucking hell, yeah, well, I hadn't had breakfast today. So then <laughs> <laughs> and then you tell your mates, yeah, she fucking well fancies me. You get your dance, and then she fucks off, and you're like, fucking bitch. I thought we had something. <laughs> I hate them. I absolutely yeah. hate them. Like, but that's how stupid guys are, mate. And and you know when guys oh let's go to the Rippers. I was like, look, you have a very statistical small chance of getting laid tonight, mate. Mm. Where we are in this bar but because you're mate, smashed and you've got shit chat. But, but then yeah. you go to the Rippers, your chance goes from a few percent to zero. Yeah. But you are disillusioned. A bit like a uh, the exact same thing in uh, casinos, mm. roulette. If you notice, there's a screen that tells you what the last balls were so it's like oh black black red 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 black's coming and you're like no mate statistically the statistics are the same whether you look at that or not what has come up does not determine or influence future roles yeah but people are influenced to think that differently house always wins yeah, we, we, yeah, we, 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 we were in Melbourne because it, we, and it was like yeah. oh it was like black black I was like Smith it's going to be red and you're like no fez and you broke it down for me I was just um, never done anything for i haven't got the bollocks to put enough money on the table that i would be excited to win you know what i mean you want to play craps right in vegas you play craps and you're all Love against vegas. the table so like um like i was there i had no idea what was going on 
I did, you know, when I went to Vegas, I was like, oh, cliche. What, do you, what did you think of Vegas? Um, it's an evil place. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to write a lot more books before I can take the boys there. Yeah, I went four times in a year and I still don't like it. <laughs> mate, I, mate, I fucking, mate, I love it. It's one of my favourite places. Really? Yeah, the best night out. It's insane. But I didn't really go on a big night out. I went there when it's I was like dark. 20. And I remember at 4pm, I was in like a fucking wife beater and board shorts. Oh, you ain't getting like, anywhere. I was like, let's just check out a few of the floors. 3am, <laughs> 3, 3 a.m. come in, smash. Mm. And like... There was a side of me I didn't like where I was with my best mate and I was well, best mate at the time. Uh, don't talk to him anymore. <laughs> if anything, dickhead. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but like, uh, I remember I had like a $100 from a $1 bet. I got snake eyes on craps. I was like, what should I do with it? Should I bet it? He's like, do what you want. I was like, should I bet it? He's like, do what you want. I bet wow. I lost it. I was like, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's Vegas to me is like, uh, it's like the devil's playground. It is, mate. It's like Disneyland for adults. Time and you just exist there. And you, some, you forget that dollars is the same as pounds, basically. <laughs> mate, what are, the, I think the, one of the stupidest things I did, I think it was our last night, and we hadn't been to a strip club, and we were there for a stag do. So I thought, right, Take me Criminal. to the yeah. Went to mate. Went to this. It, mate, it was a super club. Went in, paid a hundred dollars to get in. Who pays a hundred? It's like a hundred pounds to get not into the strip girls. clubs. Not the girls. They mate, don't. I so mate. No, I won't. Na- I won't. Not. Girls get them for free. I won't name him. Sure yeah. Next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I won't Maybe name him. But back. we went in there, <laughs> and they started showing us round, and they were like, "Oh, in here, half an hour, four hundred dollars." And I was like, "Fucking hell." Bum but, I was going. But mate, it's the thing. It's it. You have to be careful in those environments because as much as you say no, you say yeah. And I was like, oh, how much is a dance? And it was like 200 plus dollars. And I had to get cash out. <laughs> we went to the... I was in a bit of a bad place when I went to Vegas. It was like post-breakup. So fucking money was anything. Just throwing it out. And mate, it was like me and him, me and my mate both went to the ATM machine. And it was like, withdraw $200. And it was like, transaction fee is $80. We both looked at each other and went, yes. Uh, <laughs> you would never press eighty oh eighty dollars for a transaction. But again, but as soon as you get home, you go, Why I I wasted about seven hundred dollars on that. But it, this is what I mean by time. guys and be, I think girls need to understand this. Like when you've got the horn, you're you're in a you're in a very different You're not in control. You're not in control. It's the back of the bus analogy. You're horny, I'm chatting to you. As soon as I finish I'm at the front of the bus again, and fuck, I'm so I'm so sorry. Women think men are dicks. They're not. We're not. We're just two different psych- psyches, yeah. pre and post ejaculation. Hundred percent. And you know they're like he was just using me because he left afterwards. And no, 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 no. The the man before he ejaculated, he yeah. really did want to take you for breakfast, but yeah. the man after Sleeps just wanted to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeps better yeah. with a pregnancy pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, but just don't think aircon yeah. uh Oh, I I've got a question. Mosquitoes. Do you so with dating, for example, there's this rule about people waiting uh, three three the three day oh, rule. This is a fantastic for, conversation for, until having sex, right? Yeah. And I was and I was chatting to when around Willits, I was chatting to one of the girls there about this, and I was like, f- I'd love to get your views on this. Does it matter if a girl waits one day, two day, three days to have sex with you? I'm gonna sunny, open that up. Sunny first. I th- I think it comes down to to the right situation the timing you know what I mean you can have a politician gri- well, I think considering all sources <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> mate just say what you think mate <laughs> no you have you, like don't get me wrong you, you have nights when it may happen first yeah. time you get nights when it's three or four dates I think for me personally the excitement of getting to know someone before you get into bed with them is kind of intriguing yeah. and it's definitely that chase element of you know actually being attracted to someone other than their... <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing thinking about Smith. Why am I to answer this question? <laughs> no, well, it's, everyone's yeah, entitled yeah. to their opinion. No, this of course, of personally. course, yeah. And, you know, for me, that's an, an exciting thing to get to know mm. someone and think, or, you know, getting excited yeah. about sleeping together, whether it be like, just a blowy handy, just the yeah. <laughs> that's, and <laughs> this is the this is an important thing. Girls who suck I love dick. the way you say stuff. I just, I just love it. <laughs> but... Girls that, sorry, did you say girls that suck dick? Carry girls on. that suck dick and don't sleep with you, you're like, well, you know, if anything, you've overstepped the mark. <laughs> it's like, you know, let's, 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 let's not buy the vodka, it's expensive, let's get the champagne instead. Oh, Counterintuitive. Yeah. You, you know, your first decision was to save money, you know. So girls like, I'm not going to sleep with you, but I'll give you a head. I'm like... I'll fucking win with that, yeah, come on. No, no, but that, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, we, we have something that could be mutually beneficial. It could be emotionally connecting us. It could be something, you know... 
it could be such a, a strong connection, yeah. euphoric, sensual. They could be grabbing, ne- scratching, yeah, that's biting, I mean, that's, that's scenario, hitting. You and instead, I mean. I've just got to do my seatbelt and get a blazer in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to you, if what's your view on it? If they, so, if they, if so this is the, this so, is the way I see it, right? You don't fuck on a first date. No. Because no, nah, because first dates are fundamentally fucking wrong anyway. Now, <laughs> watch dogs, right? A dog goes over, sniff his, sniffs an ass. They sniff each other's ass. They go separate ways. A dog doesn't just jump on another dog and try and fuck it. Mm. The way that we should be doing first dates is if you like somebody, find them attractive and you've never met them, which is what a lot of it happens in our, in our age, meet them for 15 minutes. If you cannot determine if you want to fuck someone in 15 minutes, go see a therapist, not a date, all right? Cause, yeah. So you meet someone. Hey, you know, there are so many ways. I've said this to you before, right? You meet a girl. There's a solution to everything. Hey, do you want to go for an ice cream? I'm on a diet. Well, how about I walk you to your train station from your office? How about we take a longer route home? How about, you know, we, we grab a bottle of kombucha at lunchtime and do a kombucha. lap around the fucking park? Whatever it is, yeah. you shouldn't be sat down in an interview setting because that's what it is. And in, in this first date, you have this thing where you sit opposite and you're like, so, uh, you know, where, how are things? Or you sit next to each other and you're like, I don't even fucking sit next to a family sit member. This it's like, just absolutely painting the fucking... You, you make that situation in that awkwardness because I, I sat opposite Linda on my first date and it was but not you, fucking But that awkward. wasn't your first date because in essence when you met her in Wollongong that was your first date okay, <laughs> and this is what there I'm you trying to say minutes. You, you meet someone briefly yeah. hey do you know what I like the way you move and this is another thing pictures like don't do it justice I love to see someone in a video yeah. And if I can see him talk or move or react in yeah. a video, I can tell if they're attractive mm. because a, a picture isn't enough. Mm-hmm. If yeah. someone's there and, you know, and they're caught off guard or, you know, they're tagged. And this is why men always on Instagram look at the tagged stuff yeah, from a girl. What do, what do men... I haven't finished my point yet, right? Sorry. Sorry. But man. let me. I'm getting to this point. The bum sniffing, <laughs> go for a dip in the sea, go for a fucking ice cream, go for a lap of the park. Then when you set up the dinner... And the actual proper date, the bougie, the fucking aftershave or but whatever. But you already washed your sheets for that next part. Yeah, because <laughs> you, you did your bum sniffing. Let's say you go for an ice cream. So you're, right? you're, you're teeing it up already. Yeah, you, you go for the ice cream. Hey, do you know what? I really enjoyed that ice cream. It's been a pleasure to meet you. I hope your tube that you get on now is good. Whatever it is, you leave them. Hey, I'd love to take you for dinner in three nights time. A week's too long. Three nights time, take them dinner. Let's go somewhere nice. You know, somewhere in between the two or whatever. But when you go for that dinner, when you go have a few glasses of wine, you should be fucking right yeah because not to say that you know there should be a pressure on that and expectations whatever but you like each other there's an excitement for it of course it is not just it's not sex isn't the pinnacle sex isn't mount everest sex is one of the steps you move in a relationship Mm. do we like each other's company cool do we like fucking each other because sexual chemistry actually exists some people like different rhythms some people like different angles some people like different but that comes as you get to know someone and the more and more you have sex the more you get to know how what does it for each Agreed. other and then you have fucking brilliant sex yeah I agree with that completely but sometimes you can tell there's just not compatibility yeah of course mm. yeah fair play fair point uh, very egotistical so men waste, do not so shouldn't waste your time then yeah it's not. very egotistical men do not like girls that you know or very much struggle to work with girls who can't come from sex you know sometimes there's a, you know a sexual equation that doesn't feed the man's ego which is fine mm. you know and then you've got other times where some guys like going fast and reckless. Other girls like it slow and sensual. And you hit, you hit a barrier. I've had this before, like six, seven years ago. Seeing this girl, beautiful, crossfitter. We both like moving at very different paces. And we <laughs> laughed about it. We had sex once yeah. and we were like, nah, this isn't going to work. Really? We literally fair just play. sat there afterwards and fair play. Fair point, fair, fair point. point. Why and can't you and she was like, she was like what thing. turns you on isn't for me. And what I like, you don't really like. And we laughed about it and we were fine with it. And we we're just like, yeah, cool. Waiting weeks, months and years sometimes. Mate. To me, does not make sense. No, I think that conversation needs to happen quite early on. But I think, you know, when you're ha- first having sex when you're younger, first few times, etc., that conversation, you're not really ready or confident enough of to course. listen to. Yeah. Whereas as you get older, you can take constructive criticism because at the end of the day, What's most important is, you know, the fact that you're actually pleasuring the person that you're having sex with and vice versa. Because that for me is more of a turn on than anything else is actually the fact that the, you know, the other party is enjoying it. Just There has to be more transparency because there is a current incorrect notion that men think 
that all women have this three date rule. But the thing is, some men like to not fuck on the first date. Some women don't like to fuck on the first date. Yeah. But the opposite is also true. And so many men go into a dating scenario like, I want to take it slow. Bro, she wants to fuck you. She wants to fuck you tonight. She's only been single two weeks and she wants to have re revenge sex on your face. <laughs> and men are there like, oh, I want to take it slow. Oh, just yeah, play your fucking to, cards. Their own, you know, and, like and as a man, you should just sit there and go, hey, do you know what? I'm willing to, to, you know, if you don't want to have sex tonight, that's cool. If you do want to have sex tonight, that's Let's also cool. Let's get it on. Yeah. yeah. And then it gives them the freedom to go, do you know what? I was going to wait two dates, but I actually really like tonight. Fuck it. Should we have a shot of tequila and go back to mine? Or whatever it is. Like Transparency. Smith, transparency. That's it. Key. And if she goes, I want to wait till marriage, he can go, let's probably not get dessert. I like that. Fair point. Fair point? Fair yeah, point. Yeah, I, I agree. I do, I do agree with you. Like there's, a, but like I said, I was talking to a girl the other week about it. We were just having a discussion around her dating experiences and she's the same thing that she'll usually wait for a bit and the hardest thing is what people got is 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 building that when you get it too quick there's no there's no connect it depends what you're after right we're not talking about the quick transactional uh, let's have sex that's cool you know you yeah. can be transparent but not if you're if you're looking for something a bit more and once you sleep with them you're sometimes left with we've well, got you don't have a connection there mm. now, this is an insecurity i reckon this I could no, be no, no 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 uh, uh, so you, you might be right but i'm talking from my experience it's happened to me before right where um, I was went on a few dates with a girl. As soon as I slept with her, I was like, "Oh, I didn't. We don't actually get along as as I as, as it was instant. It was like, oh, and, okay. so I don't know you didn't what feel that is. Anything yeah. From, so it's like if it. I'd got that sooner without That's sounding crude, though. you yeah, could have you know, wasted yeah. less of her time. Because like, I thought I thought she was cool. Like we went on some cool dates, blah blah blah. So, and I was like, oh, actually, but I don't. I'm trying to figure that out. But That's so, where it's not. It's not a transactional thing. And I yeah, do I know think that there has to be an element of connection for sex to be as good as it can be and if mm. it's not then it it does almost feel transactional the thing is that regardless of if who's coming or not coming that's so, some men women jump to conclusions more than men sexist no i'm joking <laughs> um men are just as bad because if a man sleeps with a woman and she puts that on the first date he goes she does that all the time <laughs> she fucking is a loose who else woman. you fucking yeah exactly yeah. And, but the truth is you don't know that mate you yeah. ask a bloke you know, he might be lying yeah and for all you know bro <laughs> That's the first time she's ever put on a first date. Don't jump to conclusions that evidence because that's how people you got to trust better. your gut though. But at the same respect, men need to become less insecure because men are hugely insecure and straight away they go, oh, she fucked me on a first date. She fucking probably fucks loads of lads. Oh, for that reason, I'm not interested. No, mm. you're compatible. If you get on well, give it a fucking go. And funnily enough, talking about the mushrooms talk, I used to have this big insecurity where I fucking hated hearing about girls I was seeing. I hated hearing about their exes. Never like this is a good this is a good one though to, to to discuss. Go on. So she she was like, oh, you know, me and my ex went to Spain, and I was like, I don't want to fucking know about Spain. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, and, and then she's like, oh, me and my ex did that. I was like, shut the fuck up about yeah. your ex. And she's like, why? I was like, because I'm imagining you banging another guy. Yeah. And then I I would take this really personally all the time, and like someone was like, oh, me and my ex went there. I was like, well, we're never fucking going there. Oh, why not? Because mm. you fucked your ex. Though. Yeah. I think. But but, no, but, you've but the thing is that I took mushrooms. Uh, last year, <laughs> right, Milk Beach, and I had so much to think about. And when I was thinking there, I just there, realized my flies open. Sorry, <laughs> been ripping the head off it in the car park before coming out to the podcast. <laughs> but like, there, there was this moment in it where I thought about it, and I was like, Do you know what? Any girl I'm seeing, I'm dating, sleeping with, whatever it is, there's a trail of the trail of stepping stones that have got me there. And every ex boyfriend is an intentional, essential stepping stone to where you're at. So at first, I remember like fucking hating the idea of thinking of the girl I was with sleeping with someone else. And then I was like, the the mushrooms gave me this gratitude mentality where I was like, if any of those dickheads didn't exist, she mm. wouldn't be with me. Yeah. If any of those dickheads hadn't tripped up, stepped out of line or cheated or whatever it was, without them doing and being exactly who they are, she wouldn't be with me. Yeah. She could have married one of them cunts and not be in my life. And then you start, you, if just with a flip of a switch, you can turn an insecurity into gratitude. And it sounds like a really weird hippie thing mm. to say until I was on the mushies. But like for a start now, when I talk with girls, I'm like, oh, so what was your ex like? What did you do? What didn't you like doing? Where is he? Do you still yeah, text him? Yeah. Yeah. Show <laughs> me your phone. Lock him. But in the same respect, like I could actually now, since that mushroom trip, meet mm. a guy and be like, hey, bro, do you know what? One thing, statistically, she's very likely to fuck you if we argue. Mm. So don't fucking talk to her that much but in the same respect thank you very much for fucking yeah, it up yeah. I, I agree with you but I also feel like 
it's this needs to be established it's, it's not i don't think it, you it's an insecurity thing from your perspective because i think everyone feels like this and how the amount this the amount of times this question comes up right when you're first well it used to anyway you used to date someone who's like how many girls have you slept with how many guys mm. why even delve into that why because seeking unhappiness no but, but what it is right is when you first date someone and i think we're all like this right when you first date someone you don't you don't ca- you're you're not you're confident you don't care about their exes you don't care about their history you know but as time goes on and you develop feelings for this person you start to care for them that's when things that's when stories and you know finding right, out actually. how many people they say yeah you start to if you're insecure that can start to play into it but my advice on that is I don't if I meet a girl I don't care how many guys I slept with I don't need to ask her that that's her past like her past is part and like I will happily have conversations around her you know, I'll always ask about her past and uh, in terms of, you know, I want to know about that person, but I don't need to know the, the intricacies because that just, it's, it's, it, one, it's got nothing to do with you really. And two, it's not going to, it's not going to help you in any way. Like it's, it's like, it's like you making, it's not, it's not the same, but it's like you fucking up in the past and then bringing up, no, that's, that's got nothing yeah. to do with you. I think, I think that's a great point. And I think, you know, from, from my past experience of relationships and even in my, my one now, everyone's different in what they're happy to talk about you know and it would take me maybe two or two years before i'd even talk to my friends about um my mum or you know past relationships and everyone has a peel back layers yeah. over time and you know i would ask you know linda also tell me about your ex-boyfriends and you don't do you know what to this day she hasn't fucking really opened that can of worms yeah. up fucking <laughs> but <laughs> to this day she hasn't really felt yeah. like she wants to talk to me about them and in 10 years time she might do or you know every well, what now are you and trying then, to achieve by that exactly there's no like for me it's if it's something that your partner wants to talk about then fine and if they're not happy to talk about that that's also fine and it's not like you know if anything i suppose it's getting to know the person because it is part of their past in the same way it's getting to know a fa- your your family because that is part of your past and part of who remember you remember i said about yeah. um turning an insecurity into a gratitude yeah so whenever i get asked that question now i'm really honest with girls and i'm like a lot yeah and i'm saying to them i'm like i fucked a lot like imagine the m- number more yeah yeah <laughs> and, uh, yeah yeah Time but i say to him i was like do you know what and again i'll talk about this in book two um they got to a point in my life where I was like, what am I doing? I was literally having sex with people because I thought it was a fucking game. Mm. I was like, I'm going to get top score. You know, like, <laughs> and uh, again, second book coming out, November. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, uh, it was as if I, my values were very misaligned and I, mm. I, I felt, have you ever realized that in life we end up playing games that no one else is playing? <laughs> yes. And, mate, oh, come and, on. and like, so Call of Duty, uh, letting a girl play Call of Duty, I was like, my fucking kill death ratio. It's going to get hit. And yeah. then I was like, no one cares. This isn't a game. This, you know, no one's going to be like, Sunday Times, bestseller James, you can't get it because you kill death ratio. It doesn't make sense. And for a long time, I was caught up in this game of thinking, how many girls can I fuck before I die? And then I realized, you know what? Make love, it's James. It's called make love. But they, it never leaves to happiness. You know, it's not a pathway to happiness. Yeah. So now I say to girls, I'm very honest with them. I'm like, yeah, I've, I've had sex with a lot of people. Yeah. But I go, you should be grateful because because <laughs> I've slept with you. <laughs> no, no, because it's, it's out the way. It's out the way. I've learned from that in my yeah, early 20s. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, now it comes to the opportunity where, sorry, I'm going to cough. <coughs> where, you know, if someone was like, you know, sliding into your DMs, oh, fans come home, quick shag, you're like, mate, do you know what? Not really. I'm tired. My back hurts. Mm. I'm 31 now. You know, I've done all of that. And it's, it's legitimately out my system for a lot of it. And I'm, and I'm like, it's, be, it's, be happy it, with that. And my future wife, when I marry her, she'll, she'll, laugh, she'll laugh. She'll be like, Ask James, he's fucked hundreds of women, you know? <laughs> and yeah. because of that, we'll, we'll actually use that insecurity to have some gratitude between us. Where, you know, our, our, my future wife would like to think I'd text her in a strip club. Mm. Like, I'm in a strip club. She'd be like, you hate strip clubs. I'd be like, I know, babe. I'll be home in a few yeah. hours, you know? Like, um, we'll be have that <clears throat> open and honesty, you know, so with important. each other. There's, you know, if you can be with your partner and know that if there's any question was thrown your way you can comfortably answer it and not feel like you're gonna shit yeah, yourself yeah just fucking <laughs> fucking just it. It. matrix then, 2 <laughs> then just do the luge every time she asks you where you were last night just fucking nowhere babe <laughs> you know what I mean and I think if you can you can have that that's 100% really mate powerful it's so important and mate you mentioned a good point and I think as lads as you grow up it's all about yeah birds birds how many birds this how many birds that but honestly mate the the true happiness is 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 in meaningful relationships with your mates and also with a partner when you're spending more time because 
if you and this is the, the danger with social media now and dating as a whole it, we live in Bondi right and it's the best and worst place because fucking people are stunning everywhere you look right transient so, yeah and it's very transient so you break up with someone you go down to the beach there are 50 there's a plethora of, of fit birds there Good one. in your in your in your hometown yeah intellect in your hometown there's probably not a lot but you if you're not careful right and this is what you need to learn is there's no end to it there's no everyone is there's there's all if you're chasing beauty um from the outside out from the outside there's always going to be someone more attractive there's always you it never ends there's always going to be someone with a bigger ass there's always going to be someone that's funny so you have <coughs> to realize what's actually important to you and it's in it's in it's in those relationships and and because it's with so like if you don't control social media as well now there's fucking it's a, it's a whole matrix of of what do you want like it's like hinge now and everything is what do you want middle eastern hispanic like you're we're not prone to as men and even as, as you're you're not used to having all of that at your disposal and if you i think it's like a drug in essence if you can't control it you're kind of fucking you're chasing a, a, a dead end you know and you're the the connection that you get when you find someone you spend quality time severely outweigh in my in my view anyway the rabbit hole of continually chase chasing women you know it's uh that's 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 my view on it so fair point fair point fair point <laughs> mate it's it's true though like um yeah. uh fucking miss her <laughs> <laughs> mate, I re- I've written, I've fucking re- bitch <laughs> no i'm joking i've I'm written joking. this i've written this really big chapter I'm in joking. yeah in the second book this isn't a plug but i really throw myself <laughs> under I'm, no i've thrown myself under Have the bus you? big time mm. where i was like when you fuck a substantial amount of women no one's waiting for you with a sign. Your, your boys aren't there. What about man with the sign? Yeah. Mate, no, but no one's there. No one's there at the finish line. No. You wake up the next day, you go home, you get in bed hungover, nothing's changed. No. You're not happier. Just your mate, just your mates, isn't it? And, and no, no, but they're oh, not, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck when he's nailing yeah. birds even or if, you're nailing birds or whoever's nailing birds. Even yeah. if we were in a competition, which didn't no. exist, and I was to tell them my scorecard, which doesn't exist. But it's yeah. like getting I would your just dick make out when you're a kid and you're like, oh, no, he might have a bigger one than me. <laughs> it's true. The, but when, when you get yeah. older, you don't give a fuck nah. if his is fucking a little bit longer or yours is a little bit chubbier. Don't point at me when you say longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah. it, you know, you you start caring less about what other people think at the end of the day. Um, yeah, but for that sure. comes with like many of the topics that we've we've spoken about tonight that comes with maturity confidence in yourself and in your environment as well so that you know in the same way we spoke about a lot of deep topics last week that mm. you know we feel comfortable to discuss that with each but other I haven't, so. even, I haven't even looked at our, yeah. our list so far do you know what? i haven't even read out the so fucking intro yet yeah luke gave me an intro where he was saying oh you know this ad and sponsor free uh so basically we'll get i'm gonna do this now actually i don't give a shit so um this, this hotel room that camera, these headsets, they ain't cheap. And we're not doing adverts. We're not asking for you lot to support financially. Just make sure you fucking share this, all right? That's all we want. Just yeah. share, tag. Plaster it everywhere. Wake up your parents, be like, listen to the fucking podcast. This is for you guys. Yeah, so, you know, oh, what's that? It's still free. What's that? <laughs> you know, watch yeah. it on YouTube. Just fucking share it. If you share it to one person. It's, do you know what? It's been nice, actually. I've got, like, a few messages on, off Instagram of people. And it's, uh, I heard you're, you've got the most followers in James's house now, other than James. Yeah, I mean, you've overtaken I'm, uh, the other I'm going to start releasing my own merch soon. Uh, yeah, it's called right. the, the Fezzinator Tours. Um, yeah, you're still on, my, it's still on mute. Yeah, um, but no, it's, do you know what? It's, and I think I've said to this to you before, it's, it's, it's nice when someone likes, you know, I've had people message me, oh, I like your depiction on, on religion and, and stuff like this. Or, and you know, people you don't even know. And it's quite nice when you hear that. Yeah, so I've, can, I've had people say to me, oh, Sonny, I, d- I don't feel really confident to start putting out content about weightlifting or mm. nutrition. And I'm like, do you know what? Who gives a fuck if you've only got 500 followers? If you influence one person or change one person's life, yeah, then that's enough and that's all that matters. And whenever I do any of my work, I think if one person messages me and go, that email really hit home, I'm fucking buzzing. Yeah. If one person, even if it's my mum sometimes replying going, well done, baby, cool. Yeah, you yeah. know, just one person, that's all it takes. I'm so glad my parents don't fucking watch this. My, yeah, my mum does, for sure. But yeah. me and my mum have got a good relationship. I've so. got a good relationship with your mum. Yeah, you have, actually. She fucking <laughs> and DMs on you. that note. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mate, those fucking <laughs> stay away! <laughs> Mate, those nuts are finesse, by the way. Mm. So let's um let's get into... Uh, can can we get into the space topic before I forget oh, my mate. fact? Okay, yeah, actually. So, um, Sorry, can, I, can you, I go for a quick... 
Uh, what do you want to go for a piss? No, he's going to go and Google about space. No, I'm going for a quick piss. Yeah. Okay, what number are you? I don't actually know, Smith. Don't make you two. Hold on. Try talking. Yeah, yeah cool. So you're muted. Do you wanna, if you want to have some nuts, eat them and chew them while you're peeing. So yeah, um, we uh, basically, last week, it was like a bit of a spin ball. I found that a lot of people, even watching uh, my lives are, you know, they're like, I'll tell us a space fact. So last week, I lost George's face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't even hear my own nose, I? Um, <laughs> I was like, uh, Brooke, tell me a space fact. And you know, I was a bit pissed last I week. I was so boozed. Oh, I think I said Lance Armstrong <laughs> went to the moon. <laughs> We might have done the cheating kind of, <laughs> but mate, I was, mate, I was, I was actually, and John, you know I was like, I can't sleep. Only had a couple of beers, mate. We were smashed. I was. We did a bottle but, of fucking mate, vodka, a whole bottle of goose, mate. I can't actually watch the second half because I cringe at how much I'm slurring. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I had people messaging me going, uh, "Sunny, were you a little bit booze on the end of that one?" I was like, "Yeah, maybe," but I've got a space fact. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's hear it. So, Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. And surprisingly, it's 450 degrees. Surprisingly, it's not Mercury, although it's closer to the sun, because Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere to regulate greenhouse its temperature. gases, and therefore the temperature fluctuates a lot on Mercury. So, therefore, Venus is the hottest planet, 450 degrees. It's got a mad greenhouse effect, doesn't it? Rate me, please. <coughs> <laughs> I, <didn't eat> that. <laughs> <laughs> I was choking on peanuts. Uh, yeah, that's that's a good one. Thanks, actually. man. It's, it's pretty not, low level, but that's fine. It's not now. just how we'll close you are to the sun, but uh, there are. So if you don't have enough mass, you might not have a sky or an atmosphere. So Mars, for instance, doesn't have a sky or an atmosphere. Uh, so Ferris, um, what space fact did you? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I work in software sales. I've been focusing this week on hitting my sales targets, eating the right foods, focusing on my we mental health, connection, my friends. I haven't I allocated chips, enough time. To, I feel. I feel this is your area of expertise. I'm here to. Is, is a couple I'm of things to for us to talk I'm here about. To learn. So first of all, if we were to look at an American football field, mm. and uh, that is the amount of time since the Big Bang, since humans have been scribing and, and noting since history, though as we know it, would be the width of one blade of grass across the whole American football field, or in essence. If you were to summarize the amount of time since the Big Bang and put it onto a calendar, everything you know would exist within the last minute of the last hour, of the last day, of the last year. All right, one more for you. <laughs> one more, let's go on. Just have one more. Quite okay, so um, uh, since the Big Bang, 13.7 <laughs> billion years Sorry, ago. this is his limelight. So we had the Big Bang. So... Everything in the observable universe used to exist in something a hundredth of the size of a full stop on a sentence. Yeah. Right. Big Bang, 13.7 billion years since. Uh, you would expect that that expansion would begin to slow down. But it's not. It's actually accelerating. And that's how we know about dark energy and dark matter. So we don't... <laughs> them fucking nostrils. <laughs> we, don't, we don't actually know that much. Of, we, we don't know what they do. We only know they're there because of the forces they have and they impact on other things. So for instance, mm. if you look at our solar system, uh, you look at all the planets and how they surround the sun, they all move at different speeds and they all orbit very differently. But if you look at us as part of the Milky Way moving around a big black hole in the middle, everything stays still. So we know there's dark energy and dark matter there, but this is the point I wanna, I wanna get to. The furthest we can see in space is 13.7 billion years, light years away. Because anything beyond that, the light hasn't reached us yet. Since that's the Big we Bang, we don't know how many stars there are. Actually, it's too far away now. Yeah, that's why we don't know how many stars there are. Well, yeah, we we can't see we beyond can't that. Yeah, them, so yeah. and also there's there's no way of counting them. Um, so that the, the my question to you is, the last one that I found. if the board, so what the edge of the spe what the edge of the universe isn't? It's not an edge. It's not a brick wall. It's not a fucking Truman Show. What it is is the horizon, and the horizon of the sea is as far as the human eye can see. It doesn't mean it's the end. It's just as far as we can see, right? Mm -hmm. That's being horizon. The horizon of the universe is as far as we can see, as far as light has reached us. What if the universe is expanding at the speed of light? What would we see? If it is accelerating away from us at the speed of light, what would we see when the light reaches us? It would look, to, it would look that time has slowed down and time would almost be still at that point. So therefore, we wouldn't see anything. So as us as the observer, this is how we can get into the idea of relativity. 
if something is accelerating away from us at the speed of light and we look at it, at that light coming to us, it changes the speed and changes the time of that, what we're looking at, right? That makes sense? Yeah, I get you. And if that object looks to not move and as if it's static, it's called an event horizon. And that's exactly what you get on the perimeter of a black hole. Boom. How's that for a bit of knowledge? Well, there you go. I think that's a great, a great knowledge bomb. <laughs> Nostrils. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. Do you know what? We're going to have to work on a special system where maybe I have to tape my nostrils so that... The Why are you breathing so heavily? Mate, it's just... I, I'm a big rhino. I'm a big person. I've got a lot of... You remind <laughs> me of Pumba off The uh, Lion King. Guys, so... We've got some fast fire rounds if you're interested. Have you? Yeah. Can but I, then can I, can I throw I, I've, I've still got three burgers to complete today. You, you got I'm, any on you? By the way, no. By the way, guys, I'm on a burger crawl today. I'm trying to eat as many burgers as I can a day. We're doing quite well. We're at four, <laughs> four places, and yeah, we've got three to do. I was told by Burger Expert, seven's a good goal. So yeah, let's have some quick fires, and then I need to get my next burger. Okay, uh, let's do it in the next 10, 15 minutes. Um, so uh, I had down here uh, Jeffrey Epstein documentary on Netflix. Have you started watching it? Not yet, no. but I learned how to turn Netflix to ultra hd last night and my brain really? just went Pow. i didn't know about that no what so you mean? if you're on a basic netflix then you can only watch in h i think it's normal hd if you go Peasants. to a uh, upper class netflix then you can get ultra hd and then if you go premium netflix not only can you watch it on multiple devices but you can watch in ultra hd 4k I didn't know that. Can you put my phone in touch, please? <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I think that was probably more relative knowledge for our listeners uh, than... Uh, fucking space. Fucking space. space yeah. you can- uh, Epstein, I never really understood who he was. Or everyone say, oh, he's fucking so powerful. Groomer, I was like, he? He's just some fucking rich guy. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, all of this. And then he didn't kill himself. And because of Rogan and all of them boys, so they didn't kill himself, whatever. Start watching it. I never really understood how fucking rich the bloke was. But here's a point I want to put to the table. People that have a lot of power, things start to escape them. And another thing that I speak about in the uh, new book is something called income satiety. Can I plug something? Is it your burger thing? No. It's free trial, Sunny Webster. <laughs> 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 but, um, uh, so yeah, there's uh, um, this thing called income satiety. And in the UK, it's about £70,000. And after you reach £70,000, as you go above it, uh, people actually struggle to appreciate the, the little things in life. So we seem to think mm. that there's this this exponential scale of, you know, the more money, the happier you are. But actually, the further we get, the more wealthy we become, we struggle to enjoy the little things. And there have even been studies, which I've cited in the book, um, <laughs> where if you expose someone to wealth before they eat chocolate, they not only enjoy the chocolate less, but they eat it a lot faster and they want to get through it. And one thing, you know, everyone's like, oh, do you envy, you know, let's say Joe Wicks, for instance, who comes up in a lot of, con- you know, people, oh, he made more money than you. I was like, it doesn't make him more successful for a start. Well, uh, really, he's having more fun. Yeah, and and not only that, and also people go, oh, wouldn't you like to do this? Wouldn't you like to do that? And I'd like to remind people that making more money does not make you more successful. And if anything, it could be the very thing that diminishes your return from the things that make you happy. If I had a billion pounds in my account and you two said, let's run do a podcast, I'd go, fuck off, you cunts. Mm. No, I'm joking. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd still come and do it. <laughs> You're the sort of person that would still come and do it, though. That's the thing. Yeah, and, and this is the point I want to get across. And Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein, whatever you want to call it, he, he's got so much money that he did probably resort to paedophilia because he was sloppy with it as well. He didn't even cover his tracks. Or if you were a billionaire and you were doing some kind of sexual deviancy with a 14-year-old, you could pay them an extra $100 to sign an I think he NDA. developed a fuck you mentality in which he thought he was untouchable. Exactly. Which I think, yeah. you know, money can give people that self, I guess esteem that they are above everyone yeah, else and yeah. untouchable above the law um, and you know it's not the case and it's essentially why I got it's fucked it, like, I'm watching it. it it's fucked and I was like I'm looking forward to watching it it looks like I feel really sorry I only watched like a, I was flicking through it the first couple of clips but you know what the girls went through and like their reflection it's horrendous mm. their reflection on it because they knew now they're older what was going on but they didn't at the time and he was literally preying on the vulnerable and a lot of obese people like you know when we see that's pe- gone off the GoPro alright okay FYI. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out 
when um, obese people, when we see fat people and obese people, we see something, we don't see their story. But when you see people that are literally stupidly, oh, stupidly is not the right word, incredibly obese, impressively obese. Impressively. There's yeah, usually nice trauma. Word. There's usually, uh, you know, behind the scenes, there's a lot of things you don't see about. Mm. And I would say sexual, physical, there's usually some kind of abuse that's gone on in the background. 100%. A lot of people then use that. as like, oh, what do you know? You've never been abused or whatever right. it is. But like, it, it, it's horrific that someone in such a position of gravitas, you know, could not only get away with it for so long, but could influence and negate so many fucking lives. The guy could have done anything. He could have had 50 women toss him off at the same time. That's not even physically possible. But he could have done it. <laughs> he had a big chopper. No, apparently he had quite a little one. Really? Yeah, yeah they I were can imagine he's the, got a small one. Yeah, they were saying it in the um, actual court case. But the girls were coming up and going, it's oh, a chopper. yeah, so he's got <laughs> a little <laughs> chopper. <laughs> it's a chopper. It's a, it's a 22. Right, but. but like, um, yeah, so I think that's going to be a topic of contention. I think that's going to uh, be yeah, the next I, last Okay, dance. why don't we all go and watch that? And for the next one, I think that's a great topic. Yeah, like, and it, it's actually horrendous. Yeah. And, mm. you know, if someone out there did kill him, good on <laughs> you. <laughs> Fuck you now. No, good on him. Yeah. Uh, and, and then Smith. we got uh, George Floyd. George Floyd? Who is George Floyd? I forgot the name wrong. Michael Jordan? No, the <laughs> the black guy. Mimi. Mate, yes, mate, oh, no, mate. The, yes, no, you got it right. Yeah, the guy, the um, guy got murdered in America. Yeah, so Fuck it's not pre- it's not police brutality. That is murder. Yeah. yeah, and so I did a post this week where I was like, we sh- every police officer should be taught jujitsu, but not everyone's like it's more than that. It's racism. I'm like, no, but if you give police officers four restraints they're legally allowed to use. Because there should be a list of yeah, finite restraints yeah. where, you know, because I've been pepper sprayed in handcuffs and there's I've a grey area before. where you're not, you're not allowed to pepper spray people in handcuffs, <laughs> but it's not a law. Yeah. But you should, if you had restraints, I'd love to know why you're pepper sprayed in a set. We'll get onto that before we close up. <laughs> like that, that shouldn't have been allowed. And when that was recorded, it shouldn't have, you know, yeah, it's racism. It's police brutality. Someone should be like, how is that man allowed to put his knee there? Mm. Like if you it's were deep, to man, if you deep. were to put legislations in place and be like this is how you retain someone neon belly Kimura trap yeah you're right you're right but it does go deeper than that like it is in theory black and white you look at that and go yeah these are what you're allowed to do this is what you should do but fucking hell God forbid and thank God we don't live over there and we're you know it's it you just but it's fucking nuts mate like like the police out here I've been pulled over on on my on my way driving through Sydney to random breathalyzer check and this is my issue with it it's like when you get pulled over it's like if I get pulled over at the airport and they want to do a random test, I'm all for it. Do it. Where my issue comes in is incompetency at doing your job, right? And if you get pulled over, like, breathalyzed, oh, what, you're stopping people from drink driving and killing people? Love it. Love your work, officer. But do it properly. Don't fucking go, put your minute, what, put your minute down. Like, there's no need to be that. get that way like, from your nostrils. I, <laughs> like, I'm, co- I, I'm, like, I'm cooperating with you. And, so sorry. And, sorry. The co- and the cops out here, right, when you get pulled over, there's no guns out there and you're still on edge. Imagine that officer's got a gun and you know what's happened. Fucking hell. Like, that you, it's, it's so easy for us to be growing up in this society to look at that and go, this should they do this, they should do it. But it's a fucking True. scary world I'm a, out I'm there. I'm a six foot blonde white guy. Yeah, I got, yeah, you are. So I've never really been exposed mm. to it. I know, but like ignorance. I said to you at the airport, and it's like, oh, uh, excuse me, can we can we pull you over for a random check? Oh, what? There's people that get really irate about that and go, oh, is it because I'm brown? Is it? Um, yeah, it is. But just do your job properly. I've got ask me whatever question you want. That's cool, but don't do it, do it properly. Yeah, do it properly. If you want to cool. be racist, like, do, it do you know what, mate? Do you know what? I also don't want to get blown up on a plane, believe it or not. <laughs> Fucking love it, mate. I also <laughs> want to get on like so. Do your job, but don't ask me shit questions like what I think of ISIS <laughs> because it's. A fucking shit question do you know what I mean fucking um, hell. Yeah, it's 100% really. yeah that I've, that's horrendous there's going to be a lot of rights from that and one thing that I've seen is COVID people bounce back they're in the streets there's like a what I find is a lot of our uh, freedoms are being given back to us because there's no other option yeah. in mm. Sydney if you were to not open the beaches people would be on them yeah. and there's this very fine line now that's going on with riots people going back you know one that he he is not the first black person to be brutally killed by a policeman in that week or even that day. Yeah, Imagine what you don't see. Yeah. Imagine if, the ones you don't see, mate. If the guy was white, close to the mouth now. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. How many podcasts have you done? <laughs> many, but I've never been called up in my nostril. Noises. <laughs> if the guy was white that was knelt on and died, would it have received as much? Even though it's equally as 
brutal. But brutal crime of what had happened, would it have been given as much? I don't think we know. We, we, we mate, it's 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 this this, uh, this debate has been going on for years, yeah. mate. It's the videos, videos, the amount of black drivers that now record themselves when they get pulled over and they're there. The, the police officer don't realize a GoPro and they go, officer, you've just pulled a gun on me for no reason. You've mm. pulled me over. I'm getting my papers. And then at first, they're actually trying to prove a point because they know it's going to go viral. But then after yeah. a while, you see the person actually like, I'm about to get shot. Yeah. I'm about to get shot. That's yeah, scary. And you know, this is one thing. Uh, Britain gets a lot of shit. Our police force are the best in the world. They are. 100%. I think the Aussie police force, I've been pulled over a couple of times. Yes, yeah, because you're white. <laughs> yeah. have, have caramel skin and see what they fucking Mate, do. Mate, and you. do you know what? The okay. British police, uh, even at Notting Hill Festival, wherever it is, like, they, you know, I, I like to think that British police see over a lot of things. Mm. You know, you're off your head. I remember once I, I mistook a dab <laughs> of Mandy at Notting Hill. And I went up to a police officer. I was like, can I put you in my Snapchat story? I was like, oh, you play like whatever. Yeah. And he was trying to convince me that he was only doing that for the day and he was a dolphin trainer. And I'm off my That's head. Class. And I was there and I was like, really? And I was like, yeah. And I've got a Snapchat story of me as like a 23, 24 year old. <laughs> this fucking dolphin trainer in a police uniform. That's right. class. And I was like, you wouldn't get that anywhere else in the world. Right. But um, yeah, anything else uh, as far as the I, I love minutes? this episode again. It was great. Really mm. enjoyable. Considering we we keep jumping into these with absolutely no topics. Mm, there's no, even, there's no structure. I'm not even going to give people the opportunity to give us topics yet to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're going to put off not having a guest till we fucking need yeah, one. I think, that, I, think that's, I think that's fair. Fair point. And do you know what? Fair point. Having, you know, like I said, the guests that we're going to bring onto this podcast, no one's going to know. I was chatting to my friend about it today. Everyone's got a story. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter if you're famous, not famous. Uh, more than likely... If we're going to pull in David Beckham here for a chat, Boring. everyone probably knows that we're going to be listening about football. Oh, Tudor Watch, is it? You, yes, <laughs> you pull in Bob from down the street. Good Bob. No yeah. one fucking knows Bob, but he might have a killer story about this one time at yeah. Bear Camp. I know, I know, Ed oh, I can get Ed Sheeran on here. Yeah? yeah I went and saw Ed Sheeran in Bath once. Yeah, he's Before he went big, there's him. about 20 of us in the room. And then he was doing like a meet and greet afterwards. I got a picture and then I, mean, I wrote on, I gave him my Twitter handle and I was like, oh, mate, follow me. He was like, all right. He never did. He's That's a coward. It. He's, not, yeah, a don't get him on he's not a man of his word. <laughs> <Mate>. <laughs> he owes me one. He's not the philanthropist we thought he was. Nah. So how do we wrap, wrap these up? I can't remember because the last time I was too boost. Uh, <laughs> I think we tried on the space back four. All right. Yeah. Um, how about we wrap up with... Uh, I think we just need... Like, you wanted to know how I got pepper spray, didn't you? But we'll leave that for the next one. That's another story, I think. Yeah, we'll leave that for the next one. Um, all right. Uh, we'll wrap up with one word that you've learned in the last year that you didn't know the meaning for quite a long time but now you know the meaning to it we've all had it where there's a <laughs> word that <you've> root <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that root met sex in Australia until this okay. year nah oh, was, what the fuck is rooting like what ah oh, yeah yeah come on that's my word mine was philanthropist I didn't know what oh, a philanthropist you know what? was oh, right. so uh, Charlie called himself a philanthropist yeah I was like I have no idea that was, his, that was his uh, Tinder bio for that's the best. Yeah. Can I? Oh, no. Go on. <laughs> Let's finish up. Finish strong. No, 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 no. Come on. No, because no, it would be used mate, against mate, me. He's, he's not going to listen to this. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, because it will ruin everyone's game. It will ruin everyone's game and I'm, I still need it. So. All right. Well, um, <laughs> uh, we want to thank you very much for tuning in to another Fair Points podcast. Uh, number two, we're going strong. Uh, <laughs> please excuse right my now. nostrils thank yeah. you guys for uh, listening it's, uh, it's been a pleasure never chore anything else that people want to add no see you in a few days for the next one see you next week yeah love cheers. you bye 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 bye